Oh yeah. Pentatonic scale. <laughs> Big as a whale. That's right. It's me, <laughs> Little Fuzzy, aka Gold. <laughs> Rapping to some Japanese music, I'm told. But my producer is racist. He doesn't know whether it is or isn't. It totally is not. not. <laughs> it totally isn't. Also, it's a different producer from Bryce. Oh, Nash no. Castillo that I was talking about. Oops. <laughs> I got, three, I got three's company. <laughs> Lil Fuzzy! <laughs> Go! AKA Go! Hi, everybody. We're going to start the Weird Things podcast. <laughs> just looking at here. Hello. He's got more mortgages than he does fingers. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think Morty's named for? <laughs> <laughs> the mortgages on this guy's account. Yeah, he's the Rick, and he's got twenty Mortys. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Hey everybody, welcome Hello. to another Monday morning, Monday or afternoon, or Tuesday, Tuesday morning, or evening. What the hell? I mean, when you're listening to it, I mean, I'm not, I'm not. The Time Lord, like you can watch it whenever you want. Yeah, man. They say no. This Saint Gallifrey. Saint Gallifrey, man. Saint Gallifrey, bro. Saint Gallifrey. You, you think the that, patron? That, you think Saint... that's ever been said at the beginning of a bar fight? Saint <laughs> Gallifrey, bro. <laughs> I get. I mean, on a long enough timeline, somebody's. I mean, I, 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 I'll bet it's been said at at least one Dragon Con. Speaking of which. Yeah. Uh, this weekend or is it next weekend? Next Labor Day. Next. Next weekend. I, this uh, this no. weekend. First I... Dragon Con in a decade that either me or you will be there. Not neither of us. Wow. Neither of us. Oh damn. Neither of us. Uh, I'm told September second through September sixth is Dragon Con this. Uh, year. you know what? Hashtag uh, the, the, the traditional lead up. This ain't Gallifrey. To something that happens at the first third of september i did not know you were not going yeah you know the delta In and the another delta. reason yeah. yeah and we're stranded in the delta oh, no dragon Andrew. con <laughs> uh yeah so no no dragon con a uh, bit of a bummer but uh but you're that doing your thing, year. so that means I'll be here yeah. for your thing. Oh, I, oh, that'd be great. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, your thing? Uh, yeah, T A O M. Oh, okay. Town. Town. Texas Association of Mathematicians. Yeah. Yeah. What? Hey, uh, uh, what's the latest on the local weather when it comes to COVID? Like, is is Austin? Austin was getting that bump, but then but then it started to go down. It uh, looked like. Well, yeah, it looks like mid uh, mid August was when the peak for the Delta, which which is uh, if you look at where the the peaks were in India and the UK, uh, it, it followed a fairly similar pattern about a month and a half, and then. <laughs> Uh, Bonnie was pointing out she read some article that was like oh, JDS three K. Like, stop it. He's he's worried about the Ligma variant. Stop. All right, that. Stop. Come it. on. It's a family stop friendly it. stream. Come on, guys. Actually, let's be serious. I don't. I don't get it. Listen, this is going against the you Bofa don't know protocol. What the Ligma variant. I I actually don't. Oh, if you had a one question, what would it be? About. About, about about the ligma variant. variant. What's a ligma? Ligma ball. Oh, okay, all right. It's, it's a both <laughs> thing. I had a feeling it was a both. <laughs> <thing. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> That's a classic for a reason. <laughs> I mean, look. There's a reason I still bank at Bank of America. <laughs> <laughs> And it's so funny to watch. Like, 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 I was laughing at that before any of my children were oh born. Oh, God. Yeah. And then, and Bofa. now my, my 17 year old figure, saw me going to Bank of America that. and was just like, and she doesn't turn to me. She turns to Josie, my 13 year old, and says, Josie, Josie, look at the name of the website. And then they both go, yeah. <laughs> Patty. All right. I, I, I think I've got a show here. Yeah. Show well, I don't know. It looks like we're still on an uptick here in Austin. 
That's that's a bum bumbler. The bumblers. A Billy Bumbler. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Florida, Florida burned a little hotter, and so that that one seemed like I don't know. I it, it was I don't know. I, mean, we, 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 I got a, I got an email. All right. This hey, is look, as expert doctors, let's give our true advice. <laughs> let's let's uh, eat ants. Eat Everybody it. knows eating yeah. fistfuls of red ants mm-hmm. is the only way to stop. <laughs> That's the take it from us, twin doctor ant eaters. <laughs> um, Wait, you're twins and doctors. We're twins and, and we're also eaters. doctors and we're and we're, and we're, and, and we're and we ant eat eaters. Ants. Yes. Oh, yeah. Have you ever seen both of us sick at the same time? I've seen mm. both of both of you. No, sick. no. <laughs> 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 Both of these hosts. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, we're ready. This is it. Oh, <laughs> bring, bring it, bring it, bring it home. <laughs> All right, here we go. Mm. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm your host this week, Bryce Castillo, as always, joined as always with Justin Robert Young. Hi. And Brian Brushwood. In many ways, I never left. As always. Well, yeah. Wait, Actually, uh, I didn't leave. <laughs> that's right. Last week. Every, every, between, every, people don't know, for the six days between shows, Brian is just stuck right there in his seat. He that's does. Right. He lives, he I, lives I here. I sit here in monastic bliss, considering all the things that may be weird and how they might resemble butts sure yeah you know when andrew's not here man you know immediately <laughs> in the first 10 minutes when andrew's not here well, when, got, yeah. when the adult is away then brian then just tags butt, the butts butt joke. are at play <laughs> <laughs> butts are okay you know what if this is the forecast for this episode i think that's fine i think it's a workable right. forecast hey man we're uh, here to discuss weird things yeah as long as we're talking about butts of the forecast i hear a rumbling in the distance never <laughs> to, what is it and what does it sound like come on share with yeah me. go it ahead like? uh, it's, 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 yes go it, there you're already here i mean you've heard of the brown note uh-huh and what's that what does it, it, it sound it's like it's a jazz club <laughs> 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 they have this flute where you go doo, 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 doo. i thought it was lower than that uh hello everybody so uh we've got some news things uh to talk about some new weird things to talk about uh spacex has uh Got that cash. I don't know if you guys saw this. No. Uh, NASA has uh, paid SpaceX for their uh, part in the human landing system, the uh, the plan to get humans uh, back to the moon before 2024. Uh, uh, it was noted that uh, NASA has uh, cut a check to SpaceX in the tune of, let me see if I can get this exactly right. Uh, <laughs> I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. I was trying to I nail the oh, tune. Oh, to do the yeah. tune? Yeah. yeah. I see. Uh, to the tune of about $300 million um, out of about $439 million. Did I say $300 million? Yes, $300 yeah. million. Out of 439 Out of 439 I'm, that they're due. And this co- uh, total contract is about $3 billion. So I've often part. wondered about how practically that kind of money gets moved around. I, I like, like we, we say things like cut a check, cut a but check, almost right. certainly there's not a three hundred million dollar check that is in the mail. It, it could be as simple as a promissory note from the government or a contract is as good as gold. For example, it, it could be enforceable immediately as a tax write down or like 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 that would be the equivalent of cutting a check where it's like, yeah, hey. No matter what, here's a straight up wait, tax. Hold on. For this so wait, is this actually the SpaceX? Uh, so usaspending.gov is a website that tracks these transactions, and it's listed there in that in that website at this point. Yeah, okay. and again, it says contract summary. It doesn't probably go into the, into the weeds as like whether right. Whether... This would be paid out over the next five years. Yeah, I w- yeah. I, although I was listening to an interview with a baseball owner once, or somebody who worked in a major league baseball franchise, and he was describing the moment that they decided to sell their team. And he was literally like on the bank website, just hitting like refresh, 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 because like at some point, a gigantic like hundreds of millions of dollars was just going to hit, wow. hit, hit the hit, hit the bank. Uh, I I can't speak to that experience, mm-hmm. but but certainly like during the holiday rush or whatever, um, you you see on you know we use Shopify as our back end on the store, and it's like you see payout schedule yeah. you see a number and and i've definitely been there to hit refresh and, and you know to see five whole digits go up or yeah. whatever oh yeah. totally totally yeah. uh uh in our chat we were told uh it's mostly wire transfers 
passport wire transfers, usually so, with, it, with it, approval it, on I, both sides. I, I would, in advance? Why would you pay in advance? I, well, I guess if you're going to hire. I mean, if you're buying yeah. a thing, you have yeah. to pay for it at the point that they're building it, right? Yeah, but I mean, you're, you're telling me the government can't get net 30 terms? <laughs> like, like 30 days after you deliver us to the moon, we'll cut you that check? <laughs> Are you trying to write like a Donald Trump stump speech? Like, <laughs> these are the worst deals. Like, how have they not done net 30? You gotta pay for it first. So easy, they do it. so simple. <laughs> the guy who's selling you bubble gum does a net 30. <laughs> the government doesn't. So, so dumb. So that's a little update. There was that work stoppage thing from a week or so ago that um, has at least been lifted for now. I, I think Blue Origin still wants to be litigious about this, but I think the, uh, that's, the work has begun. Uh, and also, they never wanted to stop SpaceX from doing it. They literally just wanted the money to build a backup for SpaceX. Right. right. This was going to be multiple contractors they wanted multiple and then it people to do it. one. Yeah, because... You know, I don't know. This is this is where we should probably uh, uh, be judicious in our wording. And uh, here, let's tell a totally separate story. Uh. Two con men are sitting at a bar. Big old person comes around flashing cabbage in a tuxedo, saying, "I'm rich." And then one of the con men, he's really, <laughs> really Margaret good. Thatcher. <laughs> <laughs> one of the con men, he's like, uh, "Man, this is my bar. I know ups thing. Everything's upside and down." And the other guy's like, "I'm Mr. Pool Hustle. I love hustling pool." And then he's like, uh, "I would not I'm let Mr. Pool Hustle into my establishment, <laughs> oh, especially by the pool table." Brian, Brian is discovering the cast of his version of Inside Out. <laughs> like these are these are actually. Really the emotions that guide all of Brian's life. Hi, Mr. Pool Hustler. I think you should apologize to your daughter. Well, I'm the big old rich guy. <laughs> now listen up. So Big Rich goes on over, and he's like, "All right, listen up, uh, uh, Professor Cabbage. Uh, uh, why don't you flash me some of that?" No, he's a professor. <laughs> professor Cabbage. And then anyway, uh, and so Dr. Pool Hustle walks over mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To, 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 to BC. <laughs> BC is what they call Big Con. Uh, yeah. and, and he's like, hey, man, uh, why don't we walk down that hill and both of us eat that lettuce? <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. And then and then he's trying to cut out the smaller guy. Uh -huh. And he's like, look, I thought we were both going to get paid here. And BC's uh -huh. all like, I don't know about that. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> I was a double, t a double, <laughs> a double agent. <laughs> and, and then anyway, then uh, uh, Pool Hustle <laughs> <laughs> begins to complain <laughs> to, be, to, to, to Professor Cabbage. Professor Cabbage. <laughs> So B H like, complains to <laughs> PC, but no, B not, not Big Con. Uh, no, PC, big, PC, big is, is, PC. Yeah, Professor Cabbage. Yeah, PC. And, PC culture. Uh, 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 like I thought, we had an agreement that we were all gonna get your money. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and Professor Cabbage is like, I don't even know if I want a Miller Lite. Well, now that we've made that clear, uh, obviously, uh, uh, yeah. No, I think the, the 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 big thing is you got a lot of these contractors that had gotten a very lived very very happily for a long time saying oh you want a a thing why don't we all build the thing mm -hmm. so we can all go as slow as we want and also they all subcontract out to each other so it's like they all wind up sharing the money anyway uh and and eventually you'll get one of them because one of them will be on time uh the only problem is that spacex is going a little bit too fast and too reliable and they're kind of effing the money up even e Elon apparently in response to this says, uh, because the whole goal is to get man on, on the moon in by 2024, um, Elon responded that uh, they will probably do this sooner than that. They, they uh, Elon, you know, always got these optimistic uh, dates. Timelines, yeah. Timelines, yeah. Uh, so we'll we'll see. We'll, we'll see. On I mean, I don't doubt that if it was a solely SpaceX thing, they could probably shoot for a more aggressive timetable the the question is with the symbolism and like knowing that the government is very interested in in paying for it and that you know, that does I, I kind think, of uh make me bummed out that uh, is so uh, i i think i'm a bit out of the loop on this story um mm. so so blue origin currently is not getting paid anything for this so right the, only the, spacex has award was awarded this contract and and the contract is not for the whole thing right now right the contract is just for the lunar capsule 
that will land on the moon. So the idea was initially that even though the government didn't have the money for two bidders, right. that they would select two bidders and find the money because that's normally kind of what happened. Right, right. But SpaceX's stuff was A, cheaper, and B, they've got a functional uh, relationship with NASA that has been fairly fruitful. Uh, and so SpaceX was just the only one, which like it, if you don't go with contractor logic and you just look at it like a human, you're like, yes, the government had X amount of money. They selected the best contractor with the best record that they've worked with for cheaper. Doy, that's what happens. Right. That's how contracts should work. But, uh, uh, but yeah, I, Blue I, Origin I, I, got I, mad because they were like, no, do what you normally do, which is pick two contracts and find more money. Well, which is what they said they were going to do, was do multiple contracts. They, and that's what I think they got. But that was before the bidding came in, right. and all the bidding obviously would not allow for two contracts within the amount of money that they were allocated. Yeah. So. And pl plus also, I would imagine that anybody worth their salt in the – negotiations would put in provisions where it's like, okay, these are deadlines. If you make it before, these are incentives. If you make it after, these are penalties and that kind of stuff. And 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 if at this point, like like my gut instinct says always more competitors, but you're right. If there's enough, you know, people competing, it's called a cartel. Uh and well, I think it's like we saw competition. And the competition was that everybody put in their bids and they all did. And one got selected, and that was that was just kind of that. The question for me, though, is uh, as this goes on, if SpaceX has the capability to move it along faster, like, do we see more and more of this mission become a SpaceX thing, or will the SLS rocket be? Oh, the hold on one second. So here, here's a crazy reversal of fortune. <clears throat> We've been talking about the U.S. government writing a check to multiple contractors uh if spacex is developing the technology what's to stop spacex from saying okay who else wants to go to the moon we plan to have four missions by this date uh see that i think if spacex wanted to do that they could i do think that they want to protect their relationship with nasa yeah and nasa i think that they they want nasa to be the one that gets the first to the moon and and have it have all the pomp and circumstance that a a American trip to the back to the moon will have. It will be a gigantic deal. Uh, but otherwise, it's like I think that they would probably be moving at the same speed that they you know would would be looking to go to Mars. You know, and uh, mm -hmm. and and per this sciencealert.com reporting, I guess uh, Russia and China are working together on their own lunar exploration program. So I, when, I, when they when they got that cooked up for uh no uh, not listed here they they probably do not have any concrete so I guarantee line. you if that's another time motivating factor then SpaceX if, if if anything is not going according to Hoyle when it comes to the SLS rocket which is supposed to be the booster uh you know SpaceX can say like well you know Russia and China seem like they're uh, they're moving along pretty fast. Just saying, uh, we got we got stuff that's uh, ready to go here. So I I'm gonna assume that there's a very good reason to uh, take off from Earth, land on the Moon, take off from the Moon, come back to Earth. But in a world where we are increasingly reusing first stage rockets and so, you know soon what second stage and and uh, uh, even you know with the with the BFR, um, uh, the entire uh, top part. Uh, as that cost drops, part of me wonders if there's not the possibility, and this is the wild speculation that I'm certain uh, if Andrew was here, he would give very good reasons why it would be a dumb way to do it. But part of me loves the idea of a bunch of short hops up to build uh, kind of a, a secondary station whose job was to orbit Earth for a little bit, and then at some point, press a button, and that station just sort of eases on over to the moon and goes in orbit around the moon. And then I realized there's a word for what I'm describing, 
it's a spaceship, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's a spaceship yeah. that like, like uh, on the order of the enterprise that, yeah. that, that just is orbiting earth and then goes to the moon and then Orbit maybe, that. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. And there's resupply missions and all that stuff. And then, you know, Oh, you want to go down to the moon here? Take, take one of these shuttles, go down to the moon, Yeah, grab your space rocks. Come on up. Yeah. We got a supply line happening. And then at some point that same station could say, okay, I'm going to head on over to Mars. If I don't mind, um, that's amazing. Like I'm, I'm describing freaking real life Star <laughs> Trek say. in in, so in our lifetime. So your point is spaceships. Yeah. No. 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 I, but, no those, but, 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 but no. But, but, but I think but you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, it's, it's like that's feasible. that's remarkable. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I. Uh, yeah, I, I, I have you ever thought of those, bro? God, you're, yeah, God dang it, dang it. I, 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 before you had talked about having that middle point move anywhere else, it, it, I did kind of go, well, well, there's nothing in between Earth and the Moon that is worth having a stopping point, right? I mean, no. it's not. It would be well, or, orbit around Earth, orbit around the Moon. Maybe, right, but I'm maybe saying, there, ain't, there ain't even a Chili's, man. But there's, there's nothing. No, I, I, I'm, I'm certain there's a Lagrange point in between that you could have like a, a fuel runs, like a, like a, like a Bucky's or yeah, 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 yeah essentially, yeah. right? Yeah. And then, and then, it, then, then it makes. Then all of a sudden, you can open that for business. If when, when Blue Origin and when Richard Branson's ghost show up, they can. Uh-huh. I, I, I'm bigger, wait, you wow. think he's going to be around 50 years from now? Come on. You want to put it against him? <laughs> yeah, well, his cyborg, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> his, his uploaded consciousness. Uh, but 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 then at that point, it's like, yeah, man, we'll sell you fuel. We got a whole bunch of waiting for you. We got a bunch of... I'm 130. Isn't it crazy, still man? Still rocking. I'm still rocking. I'm very old. You got room for my 20-year-old models, right? <laughs> I'm just as wrinkly as I was at 45. Turns out if you get wrinkly, enough it looks like new skin <laughs> i'm richard Pratt and i'm 140 tubular bells <laughs> <laughs> uh, i got a different different topic for you today uh, <laughs> be a weird deep cut for him to make I you, did always that in the know, 70s. you always know when andrew's not here you're just it's like a, <laughs> it's a very bell. specific energy <laughs> Uh, would would either of you be interested in getting into the high paced uh, uh, world of Low risk world of bonds? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead of uh, Texas real estate. Uh, oh. Yes, I, I feel like uh, 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 you are the only odd man out who has not ventured into <laughs> the wild and woolly world of Texas real estate. Uh, so I'd love to show you some photos if I can have you describe them of uh, thirteen two twenty nine South View Lane in Dallas, Texas. Oh. Dallas, Texas. Uh, this looks to be my goodness a a, a, a private school for girls. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it looks like maybe a. Four thousand square foot single story home in the suburbs. No, you think it's single story? I think it. No, that looks. Uh, I was saying no, your yeah, square it's footage is low. Definitely, uh, okay, maybe six thousand two story. Yeah, oh, that is big. That's a. That's a. That's a. That's oh a dear. No, let's uh, let's up that. That's that's a good eight thousand square feet two story. I'm gonna say eight bedroom four bath six. Six uh, bathroom. I'd yeah. say that is too many bedrooms and too many bathrooms. Oh, uh, and and probably a pretty healthy backyard too. How's the school district? Uh, you, you know, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's good, but you, you considering it is a school. It's uh, <laughs> Professor Xavier's I know. school for exceptional there was, children. There was there was a joke. I think it was like Pharrell was like selling his house, and somebody was making fun of it for saying that like this dude lives in a community college. <laughs> it's just this massive glass structure that looks like a newly built community college, but that definitely just looks like a private school. Yeah. What in what in what ways are we like the windows don't look right if you look at them for more than a second second like the oh no oh no oh, i no. know exactly where this is headed Uh-oh. this is some ai generated fake house that never existed oh no this is a real house it's been on zillow for 115 days okay in this market <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, it might be because it, you you said that there's what eight beds four baths yeah no because this is uh, this is a whole genre of oh. zillow where 
there's like a nice house and then you just kind of keep going through the inside pictures and they wind up telling a bit of a weird story. I would not be shocked if this was some kind of former mental institution or correctional. Somebody facility. in the uh, chat, Wolf Clan 99 is saying, is it just a facade? Which would be amazing. Just a, yeah. just a, like, way, like, yeah. like a Hollywood set. This is, this is <laughs> in, in, in Dallas, Texas, North Korea, DMZ. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, your eight bed and four bath uh, count is also a little high. This this is the description a property unlike any other with walls flooring and ceiling made of concrete this building can serve as the perfect storage spot for large wine collections art collections multiple cars as well as serving as the ultimate safe house the building is connected to two electrical grids and features a natural gas generator powered powered by two diesel diesel fuel tanks uh, which makes the chance of power loss very rare. It includes office space and warehouse space. No bedrooms, one bath. You can it's buy a, a warehouse disguised as a, as as a suburban so house. It's a safe house. It's like a black site. It looks like uh uh where, oh where Batman is in Dark Knight. I would so buy one of these. Could you? I, I think I could talk Bonnie into like like, like we're wait. not seeing any photos of bedrooms. We're seeing like no. big no, no, server yeah. rack rooms that uh, are empty and a huge diesel generator. Yeah, yeah, can you can you rent Michael Caine to to <laughs> say like some men just want to watch the world burn? <laughs> I mean. Uh, uh, maybe you <laughs> could a install a bunch of. Injury. <laughs> it's like you, you could spend uh, millions of dollars on grow lab stuff and just and just like wait like you're in the starters block for for <laughs> pot for weed to be legal in in Texas and then just just you know go run it out. Although I, I guess at that point you would grow it outside. Yeah. <laughs> well. Uh, so yeah. So if you got a, about one million dollars lying around, you can get um. Uh, and this is, wait, in, wait, where is in, in the Dallas area. This is in in Dallas. Okay. Let's see. Well, no wonder it's so cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Stay down, Dallas. Damn. Inner Texas slander. <laughs> Well, you know what's not slander is supporting us on Patreon. Isn't that right? Hell yeah, man. Here's the deal. There's a website called Patreon.com. <laughs> it's on a thing called the World Wide Web. It's changed the world. Why aren't you what? on it? The information superhighway. The information superhighway is here. Folks, if you head on over to Patreon.com slash Weird Things, you can support this program. If you give us your hard-earned money, and then not only do you get the After Things podcast before anybody else does, but also you will go to sleep tonight sound no, with I was the, about to the, say you will go to sleep go. tonight forever no you won't die in fact I will promise that you will live forever if you give us your money right now uh, 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 be a part of our prosperity gospel and give us money and you will benefit bye that's oh, the end oh, of good. Oh, oh, bye. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I thought you meant by, also... by the method of. No. Just <laughs> see you. That's the end of the plug. Uh, Patreon.com slash. Every it time there. I leave, uh, every time I hang up the phone, I'm going to be like, bye. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, here's something. I don't know if you guys saw this. There's, there's all this talk of metaverses and, and uh, virtual reality. Uh, Facebook showed off. Uh, their new VR work meetings uh, uh, over the past week. Did you guys see these? I yeah. saw the headlines. I did not try it. Um, I was scared too because but they, you know what? They already have the perfect VR meeting uh, uh, space, and it's called Demio. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, or golf. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, well, and that's the thing. Like, there's also like there's like rec room. There's VR chat. Like, there are like ways to put people in the same VR space, f f just for work and and I guess having an avatar. I, it's very. I I don't. I mean, like this seems. Like good for Oculus and Facebook, I guess, for getting the 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 little demo on CBS this morning, which is the clip we're seeing where Gail King is is in there with Mark Zuckerberg and they're having an awkward conversation. But like I I spend a fair amount of time in Oculus, probably more than the statistical average of of humans. Uh I can't imagine the world in which everybody has an oculus and everyone wants to put them on so everybody can can do work so here's here are let me let me play uh, uh devil's zuckerberg um but i repeat myself 
Uh, <laughs> the, uh, yeah. First uh, Dallas, yeah. your next mark. So you cabbage. You you are correct, sir. Professor Cabbage. <laughs> you and I have done deals where we have created content specifically for VR platforms. Uh, we, uh, twice we, we yes. did gigs with uh, did. Discovery VR mm -hmm. um, and Toyota. Nowadays, let's go places uh, uh, <laughs> with the with the all new uh, Rav4 Rav4 hybrid. hybrid. Yeah, uh, not the, all new anymore. No. Uh, well, I mean, it, it was when it's always new. It was when the heart. check cleared. That's Hello. right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, God, I always wanted to give the specific amount. Go ahead. VR, VR, <laughs> no, VR. No. Uh, refresh, uh, refresh, refresh, yeah. refresh, refresh. <laughs> uh, so the, the uh, uh, imagine uh, nowadays we would have a meeting to do that, and it would be over Zoom. Because Probably. what yeah. they're doing is in VR – there might have been an early discussion about like, are you familiar with VR? Are you, are you, are you, that kind of stuff. Uh, and we're like, yeah, of course we are. And they're like, oh, so you go, oh, yeah, we love Oculus or whatever. And they're all like, well, you know what? Uh, let's just have it in. We could do a Zoom meeting or or we could just hop in. It's easiest with, you know. Is it though? I, because if, if what you want to do is judge talent in that environment. So like when we appear on camera on the, you know, Zoom or whatever, yeah. we, we're pitching ourselves as on-screen talent. So certainly in that case. But Zoom would have the advantage of our faces in reality being there and not it being avatars that are all talking to each other. Because if we're going to have the meeting in VR, why not have it in Animal Crossing? Not to mention, I can do a Zoom on my phone if I'm out and about, or if there's spontaneous last minute, I don't. That's that's always a great way to show up for a, a four digit pitch meeting deal. So, is, so, I'm talking is, about, I'm talking about broad driving. broad uses of work work I, communication. Yes. I, I am doing my very hardest to find the edge so edge case where this would make sense. Here's yeah. where I would say that it has an ability. Uh, if you are looking for. Uh, an engaging brainstorming scenario where you're easily able to write on a quote unquote whiteboard, which you would be able to do with the Oculus things. And I will say that like the, I, the feeling of meeting with people in an Oculus VR is shockingly fun and engaging. Right. Like the, during the, the depths of the pandemic, some of the most fun that I had was, everybody playing golf like me you heaton andrew playing vr golf together like that is something that feels remarkably uh uh real it, it it felt authentic i felt connected to everybody so if we were not playing golf or playing demio but instead we were we were actually doing a brainstorming thing like i could see where that's the case but boy do you already have to have buy-in and it's like you know, you could probably go a lot faster and also have access to the keyboard and to the full internet uh, uh, if you were just on Zoom. Well, he, he, again, I've not used this particular instance. I'm going to imagine there's all kinds of stupid DRM everything on there. But what this seems like, uh, it seems like it could be a not constantly broken low frame rate big screen. Because if you've ever messed around with big screen, that's very, very close to, you know, just us hanging out in a is, room. Is that an app? I don't know. Big screen, uh, uh, big screen is uh, uh, imagine that the three of us sit around that one computer monitor. We take turns, you know, throwing up content for each other to watch. We turn and we talk to each other. And we're like, OK, no, no, no back this up and look okay. at this part. Gotcha. You know, it's a VR watch party. Uh, co uh, yeah. Correct. But but it's for, you know, whatever you want. Screen capture. Um, if if this works smoother, better, and with less BS than big screen, if it, it like like big screen, I want very very much to work, just doesn't uh, or has not uh, in all the attempts. But I've also, made. It, it requires the physical having of the of the Oculus on your head, right? Like uh, you or, are, or some some VR thing. some VR yeah. thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the other thing is that like even for us when you account for real life things like not everybody's got their thing like, like their headset plugged in not everybody has a battery it still is a little heavy maybe in the next gen it'll it'll approach the you know it'll it'll be closer to 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 glasses than 
a hat made of uh, bricks or whatever. Right. But like, <laughs> which by the way, at this point, I'll still take a hat made of bricks as long as there's a brick on the back and the front. It's the <laughs> the, the only the brick in the front that's driving me nuts. Yeah, and this is a a a tweet that. Bryce is bringing up very funny to me that everybody is like we have zoom fatigue and Facebook's like okay strap this computer on your face and strip to the stra- step into the metaverse baby uh yeah I I I uh if if the pass-through viewing was always on and the AR were just a little bit more reliable like I- I'm truly astonished at how much walking around I could do with that brick still on my face yeah and part of me wonders if I might not go a full half day walking around doing chores. Battery life. That's the biggest thing. Correct. Is that, that right now, battery life, uh, it's for longer form games like Demio, like battery life becomes a problem. Yeah. Because not everybody's <laughs> got to play game. By the end, all of a sudden, all the characters are very static sitting still because we've all sat in a chair to plug in <laughs> yeah. so that we could keep on playing. So, uh, uh, Oculus is is a platform that I give a lot of credit to. I think that they have, uh, they are effectively the the far and away leader of the VR genre. Um, stuff like this doesn't do anything to assuage what is without a doubt the biggest criticism I hear of the platform, which is I don't want to have Facebook Facebook involved. It's, it's in the it. only mm-hmm. negative I ever see on yeah. anything related to Oculus. Anything yeah. it's like pros everything about it cons facebook <laughs> yes and and, and the, there's only that's a such a deep I, I feel like that's such a deep ingrained gut reaction people have that even if facebook let's say in however it would it would be in your head hypothetically that overnight facebook became your perfect company and they were making all of the right decisions for uh, let's say a year straight people would you would still have this response of i don't trust facebook yep it's still it's it's the uh, you, the, they, the they right can't buy answer, their way out of good out of yeah uh, it, the right answer is to do as far as i know nobody calls it the microsoft xbox they call it the xbox, the xbox. and as far as i know you have to look very hard to find the word microsoft anywhere on it uh that's what facebook should have done years ago with oculus well, from I, the beginning but number one i do think in and when you get to be of a certain size company wise your job is no longer to be loved. Your job is to be understood and and to mitigate the downside because you're going to be so big. People are going to run into you in so many different places that you're never going to be adored, right? Like even Amazon. Amazon, effectively, for a lot of people during the lockdown, were their lifeline. Were it not for Amazon, there it would, it would have been a more painful situation. And yet, we still hold you know, uh, Jeff Bezos going to space against him. We still talk about the, the, the costs of what, what happens for, for Amazon, despite the fact that it effectively, I mean, I was uh, uh, with a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago and uh, we were just looking at like some gardening supplies and I was like, oh, well, you can just probably get, it's like a little thing. You can just get it on Amazon. And she's like, I don't like Amazon. I don't want to, I don't want to do it. I would rather drive to the thing. And it's like, like, okay, you know what? Let's settle this over some Chick-fil-A. What? Well, no, no, no. So, no, and then I was like, I was like, okay, well, we won't do it. And she's like, oh no, I'm still going to order it off Amazon. Like, I just don't <laughs> like it. I just wanted to express to you that I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of it. So it's like, you know, I don't know if Facebook will ever be loved, and I don't know if it really even hampers the sales of Oculus. It is, it is a thing that uh, is just a part of its DNA. But I don't know if. Uh, you know, I don't know like that, that, that sells that, more. That was a bitter pill. I I think absent the evangelism of of both you and Andrew, I don't. I th- I think I still would not have an Oculus, and it would be uh, in large part uh, out of contempt for both Facebook and the way um, Oculus is capturing the market. Straight up by writing checks to say whatever you do, don't make this for the Vive. Yeah. Whatever you do, don't make this for the Vive. Well, I mean. It- if you want to start judging companies on that, then there are a lot of other publishers, console owners, or console makers you'd have to I mean, side eye at. As well. I mean, that, that is that is in, de- in VR. I mean, it's yeah, like, but, but no, I mean, it's but, like in, in, we're, 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 talk, we're talking about VR. Yeah. And sure. I'm saying that yeah. I would like the open one, not the closed one. I understand. One. Sure. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. I'm saying not a lot of not a lot of good big open systems in gaming. End of sentence. Hmm. All hardware, like 
spends money on exclusives, right? Mm-hmm. PlayStation does. Uh-huh. Xbox does. Xbox majorly. does. Nintendo creates their own. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Like that, that is, that is the, the, the rule, not the exception. Now, no, the hope being, oh, it's VR. It's a brand new world. We we can build paradise this time. And now Oculus comes in and says, no, we want to spend the money on it. I get that. And and I think the difference was, is like, for example, to create a halo, uh, halo is an idea. uh, And then Microsoft says, here's the money to make the idea. And then the idea Mm -hmm. happens. Whereas what Oculus was doing was running around Saying, nice demo, we'll take it. Don't don't make it for for vibe. Nice demo, we'll take it. But you know it. what? You but know. I mean, uh, uh, if, I mean, if we want to go into this rabbit hole, like the the same thing got levied against uh, the Epic Game Store on on the PC for doing the exact same thing. But I mean, the, there's not a lot of money going around from platform holders, store store owners to to have developers or publishers make games for PC, and, right? And that is a like, legitimate ding that people were levying against uh, uh, Valve for like, like, hey man, you're not writing, ch- like, yes, gra- gra- right. it's great that it's easy to get on the store, but it, it's even greater if you would- If there's support games the on people. the store. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. but, 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 but there was a hot minute where it's like all the demos, you know, if you wanted 15 minutes of novelty, uh, and and that'll be a cool game someday. Uh, yeah, sure. Well, and and VR is like you think about it, like VR development is expensive because there's so much hardware and testing you've got to do. You have so many OSs and code bases that you're building on top of. I I I I, I, I this is all to say I wouldn't ding Facebook as much for putting money into into this development system, but I don't think there would ever be a world where I buy a device with Facebook's logo on it kind of just full just stop. Full stop. Someone, someone yeah. else will make an all-in-one VR thing and it will, and I'm sure there are plenty of people like me who would well, jump and, onto and, a platform. I, I, will, I, will, I will say that absent Palmer Lucky from the organization, which he has not been there for a while, right. uh, the fact that Zuckerberg is the face of the Oculus and he's the one that's going on CBS and doing this demo with, with Gail King, I, I don't know if that helps that brand like because zuckerberg is a loaded term right uh uh, he carries a lot of of baggage from a lot of different things positive and negative and this is i think just a really cool device that people should go get that i i I think not putting him on front street would probably sell more but then again the other argument would be more people are going to look at this thing if zuckerberg has it on him because he's one of the most famous people on the planet, and like conversely, he needs the good PR. Like people, people he, he would like be Oculus, that, yeah. right? People will begrudgingly buy Oculus, and if so, be- be- better him doing the VR <laughs> demo with Gail King than showing how ad targeting works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, or yeah, or, or the, the the virtues of pixeling on your website. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Or the, being in front of Congress asking or answering questions from ding dongs. Yeah, you'd rather have. Gail King and kind of softball. CBS oh, yeah. It's got questions. freckles on your nose. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, we're at a table. Oh. It almost feels like the table is real. He's, and, and he's, a, he's like, he's like, <laughs> he's, he's like uh, oh, shut up. Let's go. Let's play. Population one, go. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, like, what are you doing? You get my left flank. Go, go, go. <laughs> Um, I got a couple of other stories here. Uh, uh, we are kind of going back into society. Um, and a, a little bit, a little bit, the Delta and whatnot, but, uh, nature is also kind of returning back into society. I have nature's two, healing. I have two stories of nature's healing. One Go. of which, uh, nature was healing at a, uh, California Ralph's, uh, a couple of weeks back. Oh no. Uh, dude. a little, a little buddy got inside a little, oh, it's a bear. A little a bear. bear and he's running around the store. He's doing his own little supermarket sweep. So th- this is go for the coffee. <laughs> this is this is uh, where in Cal- yeah. California? Yeah, this is uh, Porter Ranch, California, from CBS LA. Where uh, is where is Porter Ranch? Can we look up where Porter Ranch is? I'm I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna lock it in, Daniel. Uh, within 200 miles of, uh, of Tahoe. Uh, oh, so you oh, think kind of out there? Yeah, well, I mean, I yeah. saw a bear when I was out there in Tahoe, and nobody it, like just like no none of the locals are all like, "Ah, oh, goddamn bears!" You know, get the hose. I mean, it is yeah. on on the flag, you know. Yeah, so, like you were warned on the way in. Yeah, bears bears are here. Uh, it is a suburb uh, near in the Los Angeles greater area. Oh wow, mm. that's surprising. Um, and 
Uh, so that's one story. Just, hey, there was a fun little bear in the grocery store. I have another story here from Australia. Uh-oh. Ooh, I have a third story then. You know they get you know they get buck wild up there. Uh, 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 it, 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 let's just take a shot. guess. This is not a very long story. Uh, a 25-year-old uh, named Helena Alati uh, was in Sydney in Woolworths. Uh, this was, what, five days ago. Boy, they really are 30 years behind us. <laughs> who, who do you think uh, Helena Alati uh, ran into? <laughs> Wait, sorry, 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 say it again. We were mm -hmm. too busy trying to make dumb jokes. Can you please repeat yourself? Sure. Who do you think? What, what did uh, what did Helena Alati run into in the Sydney Woolworths? Oh. Uh, outdated racism toward Italians. Uh, oh, oh, geez. My oh, my mother. Oh, my mother. Oh, my mother. I mean, it's got to... It, it, it's got to be so de rigueur to have a kangaroo um, and, or even a koala. koala I, I'm, I'm locking in koala. I'd be like that one. Koala goes would around. move so slow that, that the, the doors wouldn't even open for it. Uh, mm. well, no, somebody probably left it in there. They're, they brought in their they pet brought koala. It in, uh, and, and they, they just left it. Then, yeah. Well, they had to go to the bathroom and their phone rang. And yeah. uh, It didn't have one of the koala changing stations. No. Snakes. It's got to be snakes. Justin says koalas. Brian mm. says snakes. Yeah, that's they, they don't call it Australia for nothing. Do they? Uh, no, Bryce, they <laughs> don't. It's me, spiders. <laughs> all right. It's just the collective spiders. <laughs> yes, we're all here. We have uh, one mind. Us, the spiders. Each of us is a neuron. Mm. Unlike you, moron. Whoa, now spiders, stop that. <laughs> okay. We... <laughs> <laughs> You're not even on the same time zone as us. Man, I can't wait for Venom too. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the clip here from... Uh, from Miss Alati here, uh, if we can play it. Yeah, I called it. Oh, I called it. My God. I called it. That's a big old snake. Yes, it's a special. Wow. And it's hanging out. <laughs> of Fully erect. The, 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 so, sorry, I'm the semi erect. Display, uh, <laughs> Come on. Like as if it were a Halloween <laughs> decoration. Yeah, it like is. Uh, it, it has hanging out. So this. Uh, I, I am suspicious of this story. Can I share my suspicions of please, this story? Please, please. Yes, I've, share I've often, your suspicions. I've often found Australians distrustful. Please continue. <laughs> Supermarket so sweep. So Miss Alati was at, this, at the store, found, just like, got surprised by the snake. It is a, it is a diamond python. It is not venomous. Um, and... Uh, she is like a wildlife. Re uh, she is a trained snake handler, and she just happens Charmer. to find. She just happens to find one in the store. Yeah. And, oh, it's, oh, you know what? Don't worry, I got this. I know how to. I'm gonna I'm save with the you. day. Hold, hold, hold on. Now, uh, let let me give just a little slice of possibility that maybe makes this more palatable. Mm. Uh, she knows her local town. Everybody knows her. Mm. The manager calls and says there's a snake here and she says i know tiktok gold when i see it and then just so there know. was collusion on both sides well, wait, wait, uh, so the snake is legitimately there correct and then she gets a the, heads up and yeah. she was like you know what makes a better story is acting like oh i just my came across God, this. there's a snake she told the bbc i just turned my head and he was about 20 centimeters from my face just looking straight at me he was looking straight at me the whole time almost like he was saying can you take me outside please all right. Well, yeah, it's fake. Uh, she she retrieved. I, mean, a, I guess she went home to go get. She get like it says she retrieved a snake bag from her home. So a snake bag. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's the way. Just replace. Uh, <laughs> just replace Weimer on her for a snake. <laughs> this Weimer on her stared at me like, "Will you take me home?" <laughs> so I went and got my Weimer on her bag <laughs> and took her on home. <laughs> Uh, she's conducted at least 20 snake rescues before. Okay. Uh, well. uh, uh, all with the exact same snake. All right, uh, I guess, uh, I guess if it, <laughs> that, that would not preclude the fact that you were called in there. Right. And she's like, I was looking for it, and I saw it. It was right by yeah, my face. You get, you get the call, I, yeah. and, and, then, and then you're like, okay, where is it? They're like, oh, I, we, we ran away. Last it's in here I somewhere. Last time I saw it, mate, it was over there by the Vegemite. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, okay. Uh, one last thing. Did you guys see? You guys see this? You guys see this Tesla bot thing? Oh no, no. But uh, uh, I 100% guarantee you, this is a prank, <laughs> and that's definitely Elon Musk. So that wasn't Elon Musk, but that definitely was a person inside of a robot, um, like a stretchy suit, um, to illustrate what Tesla would like to do in making a humanoid robot. And then it just does the jitterbug. <laughs> so like I got that is like like a a a dig on the Boston dynamics oh. like you know dancing robots <laughs> so they actually just got a dance so good to make it look like a like a humanoid robot before it just, <laughs> just cuts a rug <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's got that perfect uncanny valley of of you're thinking like man that looks really <laughs> <laughs> and it's just as you get to the f of fake and, and then, then it starts dancing and then it just starts like <laughs> <laughs> so this was part of the tesla ai day event uh keynote thing uh, basically, uh, at, at the event, uh, Elon um, announced that they would be making a Tesla bot eventually. It would uh, be about five feet eight. It would weigh 125 pounds. It would have human, quote, human level hands and eliminate, quote, dangerous, repetitive, boring tasks. Um, and yes, they used a human being to um, illustrate. The only way this could be better is if uh ai days starts and uh elon musk walks out and says oh man do we have some great inventions but uh uh bryce do you have a game for us and bryce, <laughs> and bryce says yes we have various inventions some of them are real some of them are not our panelists are <laughs> i would be game for that hit me up elon we can make a we can make a game biggie uh, 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 the the only other uh, when we were talking about nature reclaiming, um, you know, getting free. Uh, did you see that Kentucky Derby uh, horse running around? If, if, no. you go, if you go to, I thought the Kentucky Derby was or whatever. It, it, it's a it's a derby. It's a racehorse. It's a racehorse in Kentucky. Uh, okay. If if you do the little Reddit thing, uh, it uh, man them them horses run fast. Yeah. It's, it's definitely running down the highway alongside the car that is that is shooting the footage of it so it, it got out and it just just straight just up ran bolted. ran down the 40 Damn. or whatever that's risky business man those horses are big cash I, I mean at least horses are give or take trained to run in a straight line unlike deer and moose there we go look at that dude uh yeah that's a horse you on the stay interstate. in your lane it is a cop pulls up like woo you gotta yeah what's your license he goes yeah. four <laughs> what kind it's of horsepower are you working with son <laughs> one <laughs> one <laughs> yeah i guess he was going down the uh the 41 the us 41 wow mm. watch them horses it couldn't be me um but yeah <laughs> uh, uh the <laughs> the the tesla bot i've i've been seeing many different things about in response, especially to like this screen of like, okay, it's going to weigh 125 pounds. It'll carry 45 pounds. It'll deadlift 150 what's, what's pounds. What's its bus size going to be? <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, Bonk. <laughs> but I, I've, I have been seeing people calling these um, uh, beyond ambitious uh, tech specs, I would say. Well, sure. I mean, uh, uh, number one, I think, A, the, the point of the Elon Musk kind of, Ouvoir is to sort of shoot for beyond what is thought to be possible or probable. Uh, I, I'm sure he's got some kind of uh, uh, back of the envelope math on on the engineering on why this would be something that that could come together if the following trends continue to follow. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, this granted, whatever Elon Musk does, because he's a large larger than life figure is going to get attention but like you know he can put some dreams out into the world and try to hope that it manifests I, like I, anyone else i don't mind explaining what you're aiming for yeah. you know if, if you know and and it's fairly well known that when it comes to deadlines they don't get you know he and deadlines are well, not th best this would friends. be this would be to me on the same level as like that neural lace yeah. thing where it's like yeah. like it's, it's something that he's got people 
It's somebody's job to be working on this. Right. Wait. How how fast they are they are going and what their realistic timetable is is probably both kind of infinity right now. But uh, you know, is and, it is yeah. somebody legit hired right now to do it? I would I would believe it. Yeah. Well, and, and if, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it makes you know the part of the idea. This was Tesla announcing this. The idea being this would be built on top of their full self driving system and all of their technology in, in terms of electric mobility. So it makes sense where if 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 I was Elon Musk and and you know you're kind of banking on success. You're banking that eventually Tesla will figure out full self-driving. They'll figure out a way to do it without lidar. They'll figure out a way to do it with just cameras or just lasers or something. Um then yeah, the next thing would be okay, well that system should be so good, should be the best in the world that you could apply it to human mobility, sidewalk mobility, bicycle mobility, what, whatever have you. And then what do you do with that? Well, put in a robot, make it do humanoid things. That's, I, I understand the, the vision, at least, at least I see the vision. Well, and plus also, I think in, in Elon's mind, I mean, who knows, but, 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 but oftentimes he's describing things that are not, that do not require technological or, or, or foundational scientific breakthroughs, he's describing engineering challenges. Like, there's no reason we can't have blank, 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 a blank. Yeah. Uh, for, and, and go back 15 years when he's like, there's no reason we can't land a rocket vertically. Yeah. You know, and it turns out he was right in, in that case. And there's no reason we, you know, other questions is like, there's no reason we can't dig tunnels all over the place. Um, those are engineering challenges. Now, whether or not the cost to benefit ratio ends up making it remotely feasible, who, who knows? But, but but that's what he's banking on. He's banking yeah. on there will be a technological or a material breakthrough such that those the costs or the work that we would probably realistically see as near impossible today become more more accessible in the very near future. And, That's and look, the bet that he's making. Yeah, and and when you look at chips, processors, uh, battery power. Tensile like, strength of various materials. Yeah, these and, are all things that are moving in the right direction. And, and yeah, I don't know. I mean, if, if people want to critique uh, how ambitious it is, then, then that's fine. I'm sure there's a lot of people that know this field a lot more than we do, but uh, I don't know. Like, I, 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 would, I would crack on Elon a lot more for, like, the deliverability of things that are feasible. Like, I mean, if you want to crack on them for like, okay, well, Starlink is not rolling out fast enough or something like that. Then it's like, okay, well that's, that's feasible or Tesla stuff, delivery timelines on that. That's something I think is, is a uh, fair game for stuff like this. It's like, all right, even the, 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 the announcement was somewhat of a joke with him doing a funny little, you know, jitterbug dance thing. Yeah. Can we watch the dance again? It's actually really <laughs> funny. <laughs> All right. Oh my God! It's yeah. dubstep that they're dancing to. Uh, of course, that's so great. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny because it's all old timey, like you know, a dance marathon dancing. You could tell, like whoever <laughs> paid one hundred and fifty dollars for the birthday party <laughs> dancer. It's like they're like, well, I only know this dance, so they're like, uh, will that match? And they're like, yeah. who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's I like no joke. I like that they definitely skimped on the suit. Like they got just the. It was a gag suit. Yeah, sure. you, like it's got. I don't know. It doesn't fit very well. I think. Um. But uh. But yeah. So that's uh. That's it for news. You guys want to do some picks? Yeah. yeah. Uh, who's got a pick? I got a pick. What? So uh, started watching last night. First two episodes of White Lotus. Ooh. Uh, which I over the moon for. Two episodes in. Absolutely love it. Uh, man, do I like, uh, stuff written by Mike White. He is really, really, really good at sandwiching, like, real human emotion, like, very much, like, you can kind of feel these sort of, the, the reality of the humanity of the characters with almost sketch comedy level ridiculousness. <laughs> Like there is, it, it is, it is so great the way he weaves that kind of stuff in here. And also it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a murder mystery. The, the opening scene begins with the fact that somebody died in the, in the resort. 
uh, and you are introduced to all these characters that are there. Uh, it is uh, uh, so far so good. A good time. White Lotus on HBO. Is uh, the whole thing already out? Or yeah, I believe not. so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's great. I I think it's and a so, killer cast. God, is the cast so good. Yeah. Uh, uh, wait till you see who shows up next episode. Ooh, next episode ooh, or the one after that. There's a very inspired casting in, in, in that. But yeah, I, I, I think it's it's great. It, it's a bit of a slow build it or slow burn to kind of get to it, but... I don't. I, I think it's. I think it's uh, yeah. Great. I mean, and I get it that that like you know you get we're three two episodes and and we haven't really advanced the murder part of it uh, uh, just yet. But at the same time, it's like, well, I don't. I don't know. I just really kind of like these characters. Like, I, I just if they all started a business or or you know uh, were in a pie eating contest, I'd kind of be into it because I just like spending time with uh, uh, all the different kind of archetypes that are here. Uh, it, it very much feels written in a 2021 kind of sense uh and also rich people being uh out of touch and ridiculous it's rich just people always be a rich time yeah so uh i went back i'm sending a photo to uh bryce um oh, okay. uh, this is this by all accounts uh, this will be a story i will tell a second time on cord killer so i'll keep it short this time um but uh i went back i i wanted to watch something that I had permission to get tired and give up on halfway through. And I had only seen it once before. Um, I believe it was David Fincher's first movie, the game with, uh, sure. Michael Douglas. Yeah. If it, if it wasn't his first, it was close to it. It was 95, I believe yeah. or so. 97. Uh, uh, no. Okay. 97. It takes place in San Francisco. Um, it's, it's, fascinating because late nineties is close enough. Like two, two years later, the matrix is going to come out yep. and there's going to be cell phones all over the place or whatever. This feels very David Mamet try and, you know, late eighties, uh, yeah. looking, um, not, but yeah, there are certain production things that I, that I notice nowadays, uh, not one shot ever without a hose down set, <laughs> you know, he I, loves like, it the entire, the entire time. Um, uh, this is the, uh, I watched the whole, I end up watching the whole movie and, uh, oh, that's right by the in, the, in the last three minutes, this is the last shot. And I go, what? Because that is house of shields, which is the location of the first episode of scam school. Oh, that yeah. window that you're looking at right now is where quarter on forehead was done. That uh, box is where I stood uh, to deliver the opening first uh, cold open for uh, Scam School. Look at that. Uh, Twelve years ago. Anyway, uh, that was that was a neat fun time. Cool. Um, I have a... also the movie is mainly boring, but then it's good at the end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've I've got a, a brief pick. I don't think I have too too much to say about it, but I, I would like to. Sorry, I would just like for that just replace one of the the reviews on the on the poster of the game mainly boring big font but good at the end <laughs> dash brian brushwood <laughs> it's mainly boring but good at the end says brian brushwood siskel and ebert give it two thumbs up sorry bryce uh i don't have too much to say about this but i i had a i had had some friends tell me that i should see it and i i, I had a good time watching the first few episodes of uh, the Netflix documentary series Formula One colon Drive to Survive. Oh my God! Does this show have a following? For mm. whatever reason, it has turned more people into Formula One fans than anything that has happened in my entire lifetime. But there is a buzz, and I would specifically say with people closer to your age, Bryce, than than our age, that people are really. Younger people are really, really, really into this documentary series and are really captivated by the world of F1 racing. Huh. It's it's interesting. I I was watching it very passively over the weekend, just just through a couple of episodes. And what I what I don't I I haven't been paying enough. I've been paying a lot of attention, but I think it's fine. It's fine to throw on because I think they do a good job of encapsulating all of the conflicts. Like you're you're. In the first few episodes that I watched, there's never a conflict during a race that is not like it got all of the context clues for you to understand. Oh, okay. Red Bull. We're talking about Red Bull. They're a great team, except they keep running into each other. So that's actually not good. 
Um, that's where we build this conflict of, yeah. oh, this is a mid-range team and they're actually doing really, really bad. That's that's the context. Uh, so I, I found it just really, really watchable. I, um, I was told that the first season is more about one specific team and then as the seasons, they, as it's gone on in the years, more and more F1 teams have opened themselves up to being a part of this thing. So you, my understanding is you get a pretty wide view of all of the teams that are playing in their conflicts and, and are per, comp competing. And I think that might be where where you get some people getting really involved because it seems like you're, it doesn't... Like with Last Chance U, the one about junior college football teams, it really felt like the film crew was always an impediment, was always like really intrusive almost, which is why they never spent more than two years at any one school, where this is like, there's already a million cameras everywhere. Everything takes place out on the racetrack anyway. Um, and so everything it, is kind of in public. And, uh, yeah. I suppose much like, uh, you know, some of the planet earth footage where, uh, uh the reason they have those aerial sh shots is because they're using telescopes from, uh, from planes so far away. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think there's an element to F1 being a, a very European sport that there is like a celebrity to this, like mm. auto racing in the United States, because NASCAR is so popular here has a tendency to be thought of as a blue collar entertainment. It's closer to, you know, tractor pulls than it is a debutante's ball. And in Europe and with Formula One, there is like a celebrity. There is there is like an exciting amount of of, of money around it. Not to say there's not money around NASCAR, but like there is there is a certain sophistication that I think I, I don't know because I haven't seen it, but between that and just the fact that the drivers are apparently pretty charismatic characters. Uh, has has certainly seemed to capture the attention of people, which is odd because uh, uh, you know major networks have been trying to make F one palatable to young American uh, a younger American audience for a, my entire life, and unless you are a gearhead or from Europe, people have just kind of shrugged because it's like, <clears throat> well, I don't know, I'm not into NASCAR, and so why am I into weird car NASCAR? Uh, yeah. yeah, and the uh, in fact, uh, <clears throat> as recently as uh, 10, 11 years ago, I remember, you know, uh, when The Onion was uh, leading the path of making videos, they did an entire three-minute Onion sports segment that was nothing but showing cars, and it's like, all right, we go now to the live transmissions uh, with the coach and the driver, and then the, 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 the coach was just shouting, go fast, I'm going fast, now what? Turn left, I'm turning left, all right, now what? Keep turning left, all right, now what? Keep, to go fast, and then, yeah. you know, that was the whole joke. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but so so you're so you're you're on board with this. I I I enjoyed throwing this on and checking it out every few like uh, and and that is not to say I don't intend to give it a real active watch, but that was just my situation. How many weekend. seasons is it? There are three seasons. Three seasons. So I guess that it's right in that bingeable Goldilocks zone mm -hmm. where it's like three seasons is like oh okay all right I'm willing to dip my toe in. It doesn't seem crazy if i actually get into it then three seasons will feel like a, a pretty substantial little journey but once you get beyond three it starts to become like a uh, oh wait I wanna... am i am i just watching f1 now yeah. <laughs> well no that's what but i i, I that, think that's that, what they i think oh, that'd be a, yeah. yeah no i mean that's the you have infinite sequels forever and so was yeah. this a netflix original or was this uh rebroadcast from somewhere else uh it has the netflix branding on it i don't know exactly <laughs> um but i i would not is that your was that your impression of the mm -hmm. okay? I th aren't there two? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, it looks like this is a Netflix uh, production in collaboration with Formula One, but uh, it doesn't look like this was something oh. they bought. So, uh, so yeah, kind of own and operate. Yeah, so good for them. Uh, they, they really the question then becomes uh, whether or not and this is certainly more of a cord killers segment, but like when. Or if does Netflix get into live and when and if do they get into sports rebroadcasting? And especially if they have this gigantic hit that they made with F1, F1 among the sports licensing deals would be probably a little bit more attainable than, let's say, basketball or football or even hockey or something like You'd have to wonder whether or not Netflix would want to go in for something like that. I but. think I think our latest hot take uh, over at Cord Killers, and you could correct me if there was a dissent that 
that I didn't hear, but but I didn't hear too much pushback when I was proposing that Netflix's play, they're plateauing in America, but they have so much international ground to continue to conquer that that's what they're focusing on. Uh, and then and then you are right. There there will be like like there's uh, 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 there's more money to be made with cost cutting measures now than there is with new acquisitions in the United States. And so then the next thing will be once that is kind of saturated, then but F one is a with, global with, exactly. Thing. That, yeah. that, that's my point. Is yeah. then that's when you come in with novel new you know, the new season of Netflix original. Because, because you, uh, I, I see what you're saying, Justin, right? That this can be a pipeline from let's get people watching the Netflix F1 show to let's get people to watch F1 that Netflix would Especially license when or in license, between but. episodes, you could be like, watch whatever name you just saw in that episode, race for... The the, the 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 Monte Carlo the Monte Cristo sandwich yeah I, I uh, so Ted Sarandos has always said that they do not want to do sports and they do not want to do live programming um and I and I, in I, this I, I, pipeline I can report yeah. exclusively that they have definitely attempted to hire live engineers and I, live live engineers sure. that we know personally but like uh and ted sarandos called them when they Bryce first used the job specifically <laughs> told you not to bring yeah. that up on the air what are you doing now, <laughs> now i think but but right, like right now they don't need to they, there's no there's no impetus for them to try to do it and and there's no upside to netflix right like here they're doing a show that has netflix's name on it that they own and operate they would only they would only ever be able to license out formula 1 actual formula 1 content forever is the best case unless they buy formula one which is not going to happen um and so i think that they would in in that specific case they would rather people watch have people watch shows like this or spin-off shows yeah formula one formula one spin how funny would that be is if the greatest worth of formula one eventually became being fodder for a reality show like basically like just being the same thing as as the housewives i mean like, that's what that's that's what all sports is well, that's what like well, even but, like but, but, uh -huh. you know uh, uh, the NFL has a greater worth than Hard Knocks, right? Which is like the right. HBO I series. Yeah. yeah. So that would be like if Hard Knocks became so popular Got and it. they expanded it, and then eventually like HBO is like we're buying the NFL <laughs> because we just want to expand and make we want to mandate that all teams need to do their own Hard Knocks right. because right. that is actually worth more money to us than you selling tickets. Like whatever, owners, keep your whatever ticket sale hey, fascinating. Blah, blah, blah 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 but like we just really want to make sure that cameras are in every locker room and we know that every left guard who secretly hates his quarterback is telling the confessional camera that and somebody gets cut at the end of every episode <laughs> okay i really like this idea <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um uh oh i forgot what i was gonna say doesn't matter F1. uh uh, Number F1. one in Bryce's heart. Uh, it's called Formula One Drive to Survive. Uh, it's on Netflix. It's kind of neat. Uh, any other picks? Are we all good? I think we're all good. Uh, we're, we're the best. All right. Well, uh, for Justin, Brian, and uh, Andrew, and Bryce, it's been weird. Among super. All righty. Well, we'll take a few minutes here and then come back with some after that. That was the that was definitely the the history of the world part one song. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I what's funny is I, I only know that song because uh uh we, we did a sub trunk routine to it. Oh really? Yeah. And then uh and then one day I was watching that movie and I was like, Hey, it's that song. Uh uh what is, I think it's Get It by Doc Severin, uh, who is the leader of the uh uh Tonight Show Orchestra. Doc, Doc. Oh, he did that thing. He, yeah, that's 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 him and his his band. All right, I'll be right back. Okay. Hello, everybody. We'll do some. After oh, look at that. Bonnie bit. just told me to go, go, go. We please check the kiln. Check the <laughs> please kiln. check the get temperature of the, of the kiln. kiln. Don't don't get mm. in the kiln. Oh. Hey, Justin. What's up? What's up? Had a good had a good weekend. Had a good weekend. Did. I went tubing. Ooh, it's a good time. Crystal, for what's it called? Crystal Lake, Crystal River. Uh, I don't know. Was it here in town? Did you go down to San Marcos? Yeah, south of San Marcos. Let's... Yeah, they it's they got a bunch of them over there. Um, that's where I went the first year or so I was here down to San Marcos. It's good. It's good tubing, and it's kind of a spot where there's a lot of tubing companies, so it's all they're all kind of. It's all there at the zoo. Uh, yeah, no, it was um. It was pretty fun. 
uh, uh, the it was Ashley's friends. We knew where she she was the connect there. Um, but uh, uh, it had been a while since I'd gone tubing. What I had forgotten is how much it takes it out of you to sit in a goddamn tube and drink for for two hours because yeah. like we all got done and boy like there was that moment so uh, apparently there's two tracks that they that they put you on one was a real like it was like a shorter one they called the horseshoe okay the other you theoretically would be able to go further but they would uh they have a shuttle that'll take you back to to the main office oh yeah the longer one wasn't going on but the question was whether or not we wanted to do the horseshoe again again uh. and when we were just getting out we we're like yeah man yeah yeah let's do it let's go and then we were not one flight of stairs from <laughs> getting out of the river that everybody's like yeah let's yeah, bail we're, we're gonna bail yeah. like it was a very second bowl of cereal mm -hmm. kind of decision where like the only time it's a good idea is right at the end of your first bowl of cereal and then you almost immediately realize it would have been a mistake but yeah. um no it was uh that was that was a uh, pretty fun pretty 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 fun mostly nice. it's just been great not being on the road or doing some crazy crap it was it was nice just being uh being back getting getting back in the groove yeah yeah nice uh, hands in a groove motion. I uh, I restarted uh, Thirty Rock yesterday. Man, that's such a good show. That show really holds up, especially the early, especially the early years when they were really trying something different. Um, have this feels like a Night Attack slash Great Night take, but like Kathy walked so Liz Lemon could run. Sure. sure i feel like there is like that fine line between like put upon professional female who has to deal with with everything that kind of comes along with life that like gets totally crapped on with kathy sure. <laughs> and and is like iconic with liz lemon that like i don't know it, it, i've i've always been fascinated with how much liz lemon became with certain women in my in my orbit like a spirit animal just like somebody that was a character that that, that they looked at and were like me that's me relatable a, a very relatable me thing which i think was totally the point of kathy right like mm -hmm. it was there to be like has this ever happened to you sure i mean it that was around the same time as you know the office or like pre parks and rec right where it was like pre Parks and Rec, yeah. Uh, like let's let's find let's make relatable work workplace comedies. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, Thirty Rock is like big and goofy, but it is still a workplace comedy, right? I mean, it's about you know the first episode's about uh, you know Pete getting laid off and yeah, and bringing in a new a new host. Um, and so I I I it's I almost see it as like in that same wave of like let's try to get everybody at home to find their work selves in the TV at home. You know, it, it, it's funny um, when you look at, you know, uh, Ricky Gervais's British office and, and he talks about the difference between the British work comedy and the American work comedy with obviously we have the kind of two side by side examples with both versions of the office. But the difference that he said is that in America, you find the joy in your shared suffering in britain you you just acknowledge that you're all suffering like the point <laughs> is is not to find the silver lining the point is just for everybody to recognize that we're all miserable and and, and that's it like we all hate this period yeah. uh, whereas in in america it's we all hate this but uh, yeah you know um also and, and and obviously with with 30 rock it's heightened to another level because it's about show business and and it's about all these and then all the stuff of like oh well how much of this is about snl and you read yeah. reading and all that stuff yeah uh because it was uh, i always read that pilot as a commentary on um 
uh, uh, Tina Fey and Rachel Dratch's show that they had in in Chicago. Right, and Rachel Dratch was supposed to be in that show a lot more. Yeah. yeah. Also, Succession coming back in October. Oh my God, I actually saw the, the, the preview today. I know it's been out for a while. This is for what? Succession. Oh, damn. Succession. Take your daddy's number one candy baby. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just an amazing. I don't know why it is. Just I didn't know perfect. Succession had a K in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a, a, a there's a, a, a viral video of a dude just doing impressions of all the characters from Succession, where like the 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 main dude is like offering people as m ms <laughs> and uh and everybody's coming over but i don't know it, it, it the guy does great impressions of all of it but it's just now forever synonymous with uh with, K- with su- candy with, baby with, with, with succession is say your daddy's number one candy baby uh hey real quick bryce okay. um i swapped out the mic switch for the old one right um, i was here when we did that here to work i i guess i guess um, it, it is it is working in this instance. All right, all right. But it, it also definitely got a cough through earlier. So. Oh, really? Even though I did, oh, man. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah. Man, uh, maybe I, we should stop buying this specific brand because <laughs> this is two independent units. Yeah. Well, I, I, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't have an answer right now for that. Um. Mm. Well, don't hold on. At me. Hold on. Mm. Oh. Okay. Yes. Hello, Brian. Say your daddy's candy baby. I'm just trying to pick it up where I'm wearing. <laughs> uh, we, we were talking about 30 Rock. I, I I restarted watching 30 Rock over the weekend. Um, What's up? Have you have you watched any 30 Rock? Have you seen Bonnie that? has watched all of them. Hmm. I, I've seen uh, a bit here or there. I'm a, it's one of those things that uh, I, I worry about um, taking just a little bit of crack, you know? Um, <laughs> Uh, it, 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 just because, well, I don't know. Maybe you I should. Might like it. Well, yeah. If there's <laughs> the, nothing wrong with it. Well, and then this wait, isn't, wait. It, you called it. Cra- your metaphor called it crack. Yeah, no. Because, else. Look, I, 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 thirty. I mean, well, first of all, it's called rock. <laughs> so, <laughs> got me, Dan. Rock, you got me there. Not even once. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, it's I, I. I'm afraid to get started on a thing that, by all rights has a long runway and seems to be addictive. However, with with the same breath, I mean, boy did I enjoy binging all of Toast of London and that kind of stuff, yeah. you know. So And 30 Rock like has a finale, is, got finished, you know. But uh, and and by all accounts it sounds like it it earned every one of its plot. It's 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 super good. Yeah, I mean, my only ding on the whole on the on the series as a whole would be like it 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 gets goofy by the end, like it becomes a goofier show. Um about halfway or later later through but but even then it still manages to uh add in good conflict uh, yeah what is it we'll talk in 30 rock talking about crack rock you're, you're the one calling it crack God, yeah no it's with 30 rocks it, it gets Look you really like high baldwin um all righty i've got i've got a little question for after things yeah. i don't know if y'all have anything going no, Brit, on you guys want to bring Brit, just bring just, it on again let's just Brit, vibe Brit, with it. take two bring it on in let's see where it goes bring it on all in right. all right then let's do after things here in three two hello ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the after things podcast i'm bryce castillo joined as always with brian brushwood yep 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 and justin robert young hey this is <laughs> oh very cool <laughs> this cool guy thing. <laughs> uh this is the kind of after weird things show about being creative professionals and and, and make figuring it out how, figuring it out how to have it all in this digital super highway information yeah uh, hello everybody that's that's the I, I i rather liked that uh that morty-esque introduction it's, yeah yeah it's all about how to how, we're gonna figure just we're after things, <laughs> uh, I I have a I have a top, this is kind of a broad topic, so feel free to take us wherever we go. Um, do you guys find yourself because we we're the three of us specifically, but I get I think anybody in a creative field uh, would would recognize that they are going through different circles of people, right? You kind of have different audiences throughout the day, right? Sure, the people that you work 
directly with, the people maybe that you you work for or who work for you, people, clients, whatever. Do you find yourselves, do you, have you ever spent any time actively thinking about uh, what uh, what we would call like uh, code switching or how how you uh, how you have to I don't know change the way that you approach different circles maybe, of people. Maybe uh, code switching sounds like one of those phrases that I'm ninety percent certain I understand, but would not want to it's, take yeah, pri- even one step forward. <laughs> primarily uh, uh, referred to, uh, I at least have heard it in uh, uh, you know the way that that. Uh, uh. Would you like me Bri- to Bryce, would you like to explain? Yeah, so, uh, why don't you go ahead? So, How about we don't do this? How about you do this? Code, code switching uh, uh, in in recent right. years has meant has has meant uh, generally for this is for, a great rodeo. Like, <laughs> uh, in general, the the contemporary conversation around code switching is for uh, queer and LGBTQ plus people of how they present themselves to different groups of people based oh, on. Oh, I the, was going to go with black people. Uh, and, and and you can look at it from and many I'm other so glad prisms. I kick this over to you guys. Yeah, <laughs> you can look at it from very many prisms, which is why I bring it up. Just I use the term very broadly here. Like at some point, right, you are in front of. A client or at some point you're in front of uh someone who you can be very casual with how do you go about gauging you go from yes queen to yes Uh, yes (laughs) yes king exactly if we're talking about the general idea of uh you know dad brian is different than uh modern Mm -hmm. rogue brian is different than weird things brian you know uh, uh, then yeah, no, I, I okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm in the same lane. Okay. okay. I, I guess you, I've effectively switched my code to the right. I guess, modality. I guess the, question, the question would be in terms of your vernacular and attitude, like, and let's take cursing out of this for, for the, the, the sake of this conversation. Oh, oh, you want to, you want to take a tour of, of how it might be different? <laughs> no. Well, I mean, cause I think that that's the biggest thing. Like, I think in general, no matter what people understand that that parents don't like random people cursing in front of their children or parents don't like cursing in front of their children if they're of a certain age and they're going to be impressionable and repeated but beyond that i i would say i really don't change i mean and we have weird careers but like uh you're I usually really, the, the you i yeah I, I, you know i think there's definitely a bit of a difference between me broadcasting versus me you know in real life but Mm. but other than that like i don't feel like i i try not to at least i try not to change my my energy too significantly because uh you know i'm 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 afraid that uh that even in situations where i might need to impress people that i'm going to be more impressive being more like me than trying to be somebody else huh um i uh, uh um my 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 uncle is in town and uh, we had a conversation about this kind of very subject last night oh. and how different things are 10 years uh, on down 10 years ago uh, I, I only had two kids i was primarily touring on the road and uh my uncle pointed out that that there was never not being on. And I think that was an artifact of, of the on the road lifestyle of like, no matter where I was, I was always the, the newest, most interesting human in any room ever. And the moment so everything it, was a gig four hours later, uh, uh, I was always somewhere else. And so as a result, it's like you behave as the newest, most interesting thing at all times. And once we became pregnant with, uh, Callie and we made the fundamental decision of like, nope, I'm going to lay down roots. And we've talked about this before about, you know, how I shuddered the first time somebody asked, oh, the usual, you know, I, I was like, oh, I am, I am not the newest, most interesting person in the room. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, there are the majority of people I interact with have no idea what I do for a living or anything. And uh, uh, <clears throat> that, that was a recalibrating challenge. And so now uh, I do feel like, uh, uh, man, I'm, I dodged a bullet by not trying to be the same Brian that's on Weird Things and, and Cord Killers and Great Night uh, locally. Because if that's how I started, 
that's how I would always have to be. And, yeah. and I'm glad that I code switched into I'm the dude playing the weird card game. The person in who the doesn't corner. necessarily make eye contact. It, exactly. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and only very slowly have found situations to make, you know, like for example, we went to uh, one of our favorite hangouts today and and I called uh, uh, one of the guys by name and it's yeah. like, well, if I'm going to be a regular, then I'm going to learn everybody's name and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely a code switcher. Uh, now, uh, on the flip side, I went to, when I went to the family reunion in Tahoe, um, because for the first time I went to a, a reunion without the rest of the family, that meant I hung out with all the singletons and, and, and didn't have a brood to be handling. Uh, and which meant that there was a lot of young people whose names I didn't know yet and who didn't know me or whatever. And, uh, it was, it was just awkward enough that like I, I ran off. And when I came back, uh, uh the, the group had all arrived and we're like, Oh, this is so-and-so, this is so-and-so and the blah, blah, blah. And it's like, where did you disappear to? And truthfully, I, I just needed a, a little bit of, of, you know, not being on. I needed to introvert and listen to an audiobook for a little bit. Yeah. So I walked to the place or whatever. But instead, uh, what I what I burst out saying was like, me? I just took a big old fat dump. <laughs> and it's like, you ever have that? It's like I ain't gonna I ain't gonna do that here. I yeah. went to my own place. Yeah. Which, which by the way was also true. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but 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 it's like, you know, th but that was but definitely now, a, now a you code had... switch moment. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's not like I was walking up and down the road myself doing stand-up material, but it's sure. like I walked in and all of a sudden there's there's 20 to 30 family members who want to, you know, get to know me. And and so yeah. that there was definitely a, a switch was flipped. Um, uh, th so all of which is to say, um, I don't know how much of the Myers-Briggs test is is BS or not, or, or what people think it is, but the one line of introversion and extroversion, uh, I know I lived for a decade full on at extrovert a hundred percent of the time. And nowadays, um, by virtue of being in the same place, I've had to learn to be a little more versatile and, and in that regard, do code switching, uh, cause it would not be appropriate for me to go, you know, Hey Bryce, let's have a staff meeting. Come on in here. I just took a big old fat dough. <laughs> now let's talk about I'm sorry, this is what schedule. shouldn't happen. Gonna, gonna, this is what hey, shouldn't hey, happen I'm because almost, like, like this is where you tell me about. that you have to pee every week, <laughs> multiple times a week. You okay, tell I was, was going to say at yeah. some point, I just like imagined. The I didn't do it for rock. laughs though. I no, did it. The 30 rock cut. And it's just like <laughs> Brian, like, you know, on like new, Year's Eve, like there's like I gotta take a big old dump, like <laughs> election day, like with a ballot in hand. I gotta take a big old dump. <laughs> Thanksgiving, I gotta take a big old dump. <laughs> Looking at the stock market <laughs> as it tumbles, I gotta dump all these stocks. Never mind. Uh, so, uh, but mm -hmm. but but yes. Uh, uh, so it, how do you, it would be very weird if we were having a candid meeting about uh, finances and I were to be in this mode I guess, I guess <laughs> during, during here's, the meeting. Here's where I would have the question is like, what is the line? Is, is it code switching if you don't think of it as code switching? Meaning that mm -hmm. like, is the definition of it that you are trying to shape your persona for the audience or... Is it just the inherent element of like, look, when the three of us are talking in in person, it's going to be a lot more low key than if the three of us are talking on Great Night, where where we're all trying to be kind of like more energetic. I don't think that either of those are necessarily inauthentic. Right. It's just, you know, different different moods for different moments. And I wouldn't think of that as code switching, but I don't know whether or not this is a a phenomenon that we can only define from the inside out or if it is defined from the outside in where somebody might say, oh no, you're you're way more laid back when you're talking to this person in private compared to when you're doing, you know, a, a pitch meeting or or trying to impress somebody that you've just met. And and I don't think that there is inherently any element of inauthenticity. Yeah. Or, or disingenuousness to the idea of code switching. Um, uh, uh, the, uh, the, reason, the reason I bring it up is, um, uh, I don't know, like there's, there's a very uh, 
I don't know how much I want to talk about this, but like, no, uh, no, 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 no. Uh oh, sorry. Uh, I'm I'm doing a little side gig, and it, it is more corporate than I expected. It, it like they're yeah. they're kind of cool people, but they're still also kind of corporate. And so it's like it's figuring out like what is wh- how comfortable do you get with with folk like that? Because yeah. it, they are like client <laughs> yeah but just, but also just tell them about your bowel movements man yeah. <laughs> that, that shakes hey, everything man. up but it's i gotta it, take a big yeah. old dump <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. maybe not dump but like dump it in token i'm glad i they cleared t- the air or at least the room <laughs> oh but it, but so it's 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 a strange thing where like I want to appear very professional, but I also want to appear cool. Yeah. And so, like, you know, we have talked about, like, narrow <laughs> wear right, Just, just, yeah, real, real quick, wear, where's you, your wear, hat? Wear a, wear a <laughs> necktie on your head. <laughs> uh, so, I don't know. That just made, it's just, it's just a thought that I had over uh, the past few weeks. It's, I, it's, 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 it's it, n- not that it's, it's I, just, I, it's, it's a strange, it's something that I hadn't really considered <laughs> before because you know most everything i do is here and it's very it's very casual environment um as, as I, 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 I will say this. have you tried to eat a hot dog during the meeting <laughs> that's the important <laughs> you can't cancel lunch you, uh, <laughs> you know I, I think that there there is that's a very interesting thing because in our modern era where we have less institutions right, right. like if you mm-hmm. look back at like mad men the idea was like go to college and meet a recruiter and, and start, you know, at, at the entry level of this job and you're going to stay with this company. And that's, that's the way it goes. Eventually and this things... guy will get a gold watch and exactly. retire and you'll get to, to, to move up. Uh, nope. You'll get to take a big old you'll, pet you'll take a, <laughs> like your grandfather did. Uh, and now Ladies thanks and to the, the internet, dump. we have so many more, ways to make money there's a lot more kind of like side gig especially if you're in the arts which is who we're primarily talking to here or people who are making their own content you're often talking to a billion different people and i do think bryce is is correct that like you gotta walk a little line of being like okay like so we're business partners but it's better for my business and probably even my mental well-being if we kind of all think of each other as friends the goal is to kind of be friends with all these people, especially if you're if you're a freelancer, because you never know who's going to end up where. So right. uh, uh, that is it, it is it is a weird thing of, of trying to walk that line of like, hey, man, I'm just but, like a cool dude, but also very responsible. And also I'm going to show up on time, but I'm going to have a not if it doesn't mean having a good time. Am I right? Anyway, I got to take a fat dump. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and the. This has been always true in single one-on-one interactions. There's some amount of social handshaking that happens. Yeah. And uh, you could overly label everything, and you get into that weird, you know, neurolinguistic programming, pseudoscientific, you know, posturing, you know, adopt this posture to say this about you or whatever. Be a sigma male. Yeah. <laughs> get a, 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 find a beta alpha sorority and, and, and well and, sigma is outside of the alpha yeah, yeah that's the ultimate alpha it's, yeah. it's the loner but also a leader wait, yeah. what about a zeta crouton don't wait eat wait, a wait a couple of years on, <laughs> on <laughs> but but my 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 point is confidence um, youtubes n- nowadays i uh internet interactions are a little bit different and um i mean justin and i talked about how different the show is when you can achieve more nonverbal communication in a single sideways glance uh, in one second than, than, you know, 30 seconds over Skype or, or video yeah. chat or, and certainly even longer over email or whatever. So um, if, if the question is, is the question how comfortable or what are the rules of thumb or? I, I just want to know what goes into your, what goes through your head when you're thinking of how, you would present yourself in front of someone, say a client. How would it would be very, very different for a bunch of different things. Uh, yeah. If if it's a gig I truly wanted to do, um, I would not talk about my bowel movements. Um, <laughs> I, uh, instead, I would do a lot of listening and I would ask the type of questions. Uh, to me, it would immediately be a chess game where it's like the first five questions I ask should be the questions, the things that they I already are about to want to say 
Mm. But if but I can demonstrate mastery of I understand how to do events. I know how to plan these things. Yeah. I know how to do whatever. And you can tell because I'm asking the questions before you have the chance to even tell me the things that you want to tell me. Um, uh, you know, in another situation, let's say there's somebody on set or whatever, and it's like you you want to break the ice, or or I I, I I don't know. It depends on number one, first principles: know your objective, know your objective. And and for example, in the story of the family reunion, my objective is I didn't want to be slinking in a corner uh, and have everybody come up and try to remember a bunch of names. And so I wanted to break that dynamic by code switching into great night persona, Brian, you know, um, you know, when it comes to a gig, that's a different set of things. I might intentionally set up an intermediary or set up, uh, uh, like, uh, 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 Hey, here's a list of five things that will really help me before we even go into the meeting. If you'll do it now, I'm not doing that as busy work to, you know, prove dominance or whatever. It's doing it so that I can show that I'm respecting their time and I care and I want to come in fully informed, you know, um, I, 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 but, but all of that begins with knowing what your objective is. And in this case, mm. they're more corporate than you would like. And so maybe your objective is, and this is me purely speculating. These are my, my musings, not what you necessarily said, sure. but let's say you, uh, your objective is to be respected for your time a little bit more Then what you can do is, um, uh, you, you can, uh, uh, have an account that is not your name. It could still be you. Uh, you know, bookings at neshcom.info, uh, re reach out, like, just to confirm, we're going to be here at this time, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Uh, 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 just so you know, if you're not there at these times, uh, let me know, and we will make accommodations to the best of our abilities. And now you, you have established that my time is valuable, and if we're going to agree to do this, we're going to do this this way. Uh, alternately, you want to be friendly with them, uh, it's like, uh, then hand somebody a choice where it's like, Hey, for a corporate client, I usually do this, uh, for a friend, I do this, um, which, which of these two you want to do. And then, and, and now they've been given an AB selection and based on their response and maybe their response is, Oh, I'd like to be both a corporate client and, uh, uh friendly, in which case now you get to say, great. In my experience, talking this way tends to be the best. Here's my phone numbers and, and you know, yeah. you're, yeah. And, and then so, so basically um, the person asking the questions is the one in charge of the conversation. And, and so if, if what you are experiencing is a cloudiness of, and, and, of I, this. And, and I don't bring this up to say that I have a problem I'm trying to solve. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just posture. I'm just posturing. Oh, it, it, it's interesting going into a more corporate climate than, and the very casual climate that that we have here. Well, and I do think that that it is we, we are in a new world. We're 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 in a world where, you know, uh, getting especially people working ad hoc. Like, it's very easy to find people now. Whether or not they're the right people, whether or not they do the job correctly, that's hard. But finding people is easier than ever. And you know, you want to make sure that you protect those relationships and knowing at, at which frequency to come in, I think can be a little, uh, can be a little, uh, uh, uh jarring. I mean, we just had a meeting with a, a corporate entity that was interested in world's greatest con and looking at doing different stuff beyond that. Uh, and that was a situation where Brian and I, now that I think back on it, we were definitely less great night, Brian and Justin and kind of more, world's greatest con brian and justin and so there was a lot more analysis and and so it was like, like some of the more quiet moments of 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 great night but like it our, our dynamic was a little different in terms of just that initial meeting so i, I do think that it 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 happens um uh, no matter what though i think that the big key is just do it from a position of of, of confidence so like like what what you said bryce that code switching as a as a concept is not inherently inauthentic or or fake or you're putting on a persona uh it's just dialing up different elements of your personality to fit the room and i think that there's nothing wrong with that yeah and i guess uh I, when i say you know know your objective i guess what i'm really saying is whatever you do do it on purpose um mm. yeah you know like like uh, there, there there was uh there was some gig 
where just, okay, there have been multiple gigs where everybody at lunch, and these are paid gigs where it's like, uh, we go to lunch and Justin and I are the only ones having IPAs and, and <laughs> everybody else is not drinking alcohol. And, 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 and we lean over we're like, do we do it? No, no. And then and the guy, the producer lead over and, and, and says, and he just says, your talent. The rules are different for talent. <laughs> <laughs> and so in that, in that regard, we uh, show up, say the lines, <laughs> make sure everybody knows that it's an all new rap for <laughs> <I've read> <laughs> <laughs> not going to say what gig it was. I'm not going to so, say what gig it was, but look, no. uh, uh, you can't tell that you're half buzzed in VR. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, uh, any other last thoughts on that topic? I thought it was kind uh, of... Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I think it's a really, really good question. And in fact, um, maybe this is a good moment to uh, invite people to write in yeah. because I'll bet that you know we, we can only speak to our experiences with this kind of stuff. Uh, I bet there's a whole set of things i in fact i would love to hear about uh people who have misread the room uh, uh either themselves oh, yeah. or had other people misread the room coming in uh because you well, see it in other people <laughs> but also i think that there's i remember one time i was in a here's a, a rarity i'm going to tell you a thing i learned in college uh from a classroom but there was a a design class that i was in and they were talking about resume design and the lady was talking about she showed a really goofy resume. Like they had rockets on it and stuff like that. And she's like, now you might think that that certainly not as simple and clean as professional as some of the other ones that we looked at, but she wants to work at places where that element of her personality is rewarded, where you look at that and, and you're like, okay, that's the kind of person that I want to work for. Don't waste my time. Yeah. And, and I think for, for anybody, especially if you're in this situation, like, you know, there, there are a lot of ways to make money. Not all of them are going to make you happy. Not all of them are going to be there for the long term. Sometimes the money's worth it. Sometimes the money's not. If you walk in, your demeanor and your attitude, that's your own way of filtering out places that you might not want to work. If, if you can't walk in and kind of be some version of yourself and you have to adopt a persona and, 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 and if let's say you walk in and you are yourself and they don't, cotton to it then that's not you reading the room that's that's you saving yourself hassle right no, that's a good point read that read that internal conflict and see what it means not just for yourself but also them and, and also that, count it if, anyway. if it doesn't happen count it as a blessing like that's that's a situation where you were just not made to be like because uh, uh, all you all, all anybody's going to do in a creative environment is become more of themselves right and it's like if you're already not to their taste. Guess what? You ain't going to get more to your taste the more you get to be you. Mm. Well, and along those lines, uh, it's kind of interesting. Saturday night, uh, uh, you got to preview that pub quiz marketing email before I sent it out. Oh, sure. And, and, and uh, now, now that I'm understanding what we're talking about with code switching and stuff, like I wanted to telegraph uh, under, under the radar that it really is Brian just straight up writing you an email, which is why when I mashed the exclamation key a bunch, I left all the at symbols that showed up as well because that is not something that a subordinate, you know, who's trying to write on behalf of Bizarre Magic Inc. would do yeah. or whatever. And then and, and the responses were fast and sloppy and, and, and didn't didn't care because, uh, uh, and I think that's part of why when people reacted, they reacted very positively because yeah. they knew for, for sure that, well, this is definitely Brian Brushwood <laughs> responding yeah. to me right now. Awesome. Cool. Well, uh, uh, there we go. I think I think that's after things. Uh, any any productiv productivity yeah. tools you guys have used lately? Uh, yeah. No, I got to pick. I got to pick. Okay. What you got? Uh, the latest episode of Ted Lasso. Oh. Uh, uh, I think it's the latest episode of Ted Lasso, mm -hmm. in which uh, a the B plot is l literally about hay bossing. Nice. The, the, uh, where Nate Nate needs to get a table at a, at a restaurant, and and the whole thing is about how to properly hay boss. It's great. Uh, yeah, a little behind on on, on the last hmm. uh, uh, quiz show, the movie that came out in 1994, directed by Robert Redford. Uh, come for a young Ray Fiennes, stay for a very inconsistent Boston accent. Oh boy, you're not you were not kidding. <laughs> it just kicks. I didn't even recognize that was the same dude as the opening scene when he's yeah. There. <laughs> I'm it's, just it like is in and out like like a, like a like a radio station. Going from town to town, like sometimes it's 
like Park the Khan Harvard Yard and the next like scene he's like hey man what's going on I'm just the same character doing the very most inconsistent Boston accent I'm gonna stop these quiz show scandals I had to leave for a minute to be Carl Hanratty and can you kiss? catch me if you can but John Turturro is great uh, nice um, I've got a and Martin Scorsese acts Oh yeah, oh. he just shows up. Just a random. There, there was that moment of like, is he? Uh, and then, sure enough, credits. You're like, wow. All right. Yeah. Uh, I've got a, a brief pick. Um, I've I've mentioned before that I I don't read a lot, but um, somebody recommended this to me, and uh, I thought it was was very uh, helpful in terms of learning some mindfulness techniques. Um, it is uh, a a book called Freedom from Anxious Thoughts and Feelings from uh, Scott uh, Simington. Uh, I think that this was was very helpful. I'm, Good I'm, read. Uh, I think it's decent. I think it's decent. It provides. Uh, it talks about mindfulness, which is something that um, I'm kind of dipping my toes into, and did not really feel like I had uh, a resource for what it is and and um, how to apply it. Uh, th- th- this book talks a lot about um, a framework of 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 taking anxiety and rumination and to to ground yourself, which is. Uh, it's a very specific framework, but um, I think it's got some interesting mindfulness stuff uh, that that might be helpful. So um, I, I think I think the the tenets of mindfulness are something that are very helpful, especially for for folks who are looking to get more of a general everyday handle on the reality around them. But good God, spending that much time in the Bay Area and just being surrounded by the only people who are mentioning mindfulness are just. Either. insufferable <laughs> it's just all the sociopaths like all the like really? like if you want uh, if you're a sociopath idiot who is just you know a bully and all you have to do is wear a hat that says like oh mindfulness and juice cleanse yeah anyway uh, uh, i now now i've been in texas for long <laughs> enough that now i'm just doing <laughs> steven crowder routines but uh uh yeah anyway uh and i think it's good i i think i think yeah. it is a good idea and really the the concept of kind of DIY psychology uh, is is a a a very worthwhile one, and I think mindfulness kind of uh, uh, takes a lot of I think sort of core tenets of understanding yourself and the world around you, and and is is very very uh, helpful. Yeah, uh, the the ba- like the the thing I got struck. Uh, got stuck on with it was um, uh, I see a therapist and she has. I mentioned multiple times mindfulness as a way to deal with stress and anxiety. Um, <laughs> it was a few weeks ago that I'd be like, hey, you know that mindfulness stuff? I don't really know what we're talking about. What are about. we talking about on that? Uh, yeah. but the idea basically with, is getting in touch with your five senses as a way to ground yourself to the present moment. Um, which is is very broad. Is a very broad it idea, is. and it's it- hard to without like. That's what I like about this book is it's got some exercises. It's got some very specific like. Let's define this and know what we're trying to. The way that I've always understood it, uh, by way of uh, uh, talking to people about it, reading a very brief amount and going to a mandatory non mandatory workshop was uh, your relation to yourself in the world, like and and understanding what you are putting out into the world and so if you can identify that then you can understand your anxiety around what you think you might be and and you can be a little bit more productive and and whole um and i think that those are all good those are all good things like anything you know you can get a little bit too kooky about it and and uh it certainly is not a a shield or an or or an identity that you can just kind of slap on uh, and pretend it means something, but like anything else in in our our crazy existence, just working on it and and, and being kind, I think uh, goes a long way. Uh, very cool. Well, uh, I think that'll do it for after things here, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this week. It's been after. Cool, Awesome. Well, uh, uh, thank you everybody for joining us here for the first half of our. Broadcast day. We got cord killers coming up in a in a couple of hours here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're gonna have Ayaz Akhtar on hey. the show. Oh, we do have a guest. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so that'll be fun. Uh, everybody, check that out. Justin R. Young here on Twitch, by the way. Make sure you give him a follow. Mm-hmm. Follow Friday. Alrighty, everybody. We'll see you guys 
Later. Bye. See ya.